Hello, Mofra. This is Curtis Schultz here, coming to you from editing and visual effects class once again. I am now going to be discussing about expanding upon the cube, so follow with me. Okay, so if you watched my last tutorial about building the 3D cube, you'll know we last left off here. Now, in this case, I uh, parented all these walls to my front wall, so if I wanted to do a rotation or anything like that, all the rest of the walls would follow. But now I'm going to show you another way we can pull this off, with my, which might help you out in the future on different things. I just want to show you some different options. So I'm going to highlight all these and actually unparent those and go to None. And now all those will be unparented. So if I was to rotate this again, it would only rotate that side. All right, so what I'm going to do here, which is kind of a cool effect, is I'm going to highlight them all, and I'm going to go up to Layer Precompose. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually flattening it all out so it's just a one image layer in its own separate composition. Move all attributes to new composition. I'm going to hit OK. And now you can see it's actually only one layer. Now the bad thing about this is even if I hit 3D, you will notice if I do a little rotation that it's actually a flat image now. Not so much what I wanted. But the cool thing I'm about to show you is this rasterize button right here. If I click on this, you'll notice, pop, there goes my cube. And now I can once again rotate this. The reason why I showed you this pre-comp is I wanted to show you two different ways that we can have a cube and be able to rotate the whole thing at one time just with one attribute of one layer. Uh, it used to be that you wouldn't be able to scale when you were parenting and stuff like that. But now with the new CS4, they've ironed out a lot of these bugs. But let's just continue on. Also, I wanted to show that if you ever want to get into one of your pre-comps, you can simply do that now by double-clicking on it. You used to have to hit option click, but now we can just double-click on it, and bam, that'll open us right into that pre-comp so we can adjust any attributes on this if we'd like to. All right, so now we're going to expand upon this cube a little bit more like I said I would. Yeah, just regular solids, not so cool. But what I can show you, which is a neat little technique, and sometimes I'll even uh, use a lot of animations that I know are going to be very RAM intensive, I'll just use solids as just place markers and then do this little method right here I'm about to show you guys to be able to finish up my product uh, because sometimes I'll do it with photos or different things like that that I just won't have, uh, I, I'll have very large files and they'll just eat up too much memory. So first off, what I actually did was I imported in some different layers here. Uh, this was a layer that I had some video footage of, of Micah with a co-worker of ours and I also brought in a picture of, uh, of our EVE logo that I had that you might recognize up here to show you this next step. So this is one thing I do. I'll number one have to click on the layer. So I'm going to replace this front wall layer with this little EVE logo up here. So I'm going to click and drag this on down and in order to flip flop these layers I actually have to hold down option and right over that layer that's highlighted and then I let go and you'll see now my EVE logo pops right in there with the same attributes in the same spot and everything so that's really the, something that will help you out I can even do it with video footage here I have one with uh, with Micah, if I was to double click on it, with Micah and uh, one of his friends there, Jay Rusa there he is on the green screen running with him and I can simply click on, let's see here I'll go ahead and rotate this wall a little bit so we can see some stuff that's going on here and maybe I'll make it, uh, I don't know, we'll make it that top layer, okay? So I'll rotate so we can see this top layer a little bit better. And same method here, click on the top, bring J falling, hold down the option key right over that layer, let go, bam, just like that, I have some video footage now in there, okay? It's upside down, but hey, I can flip-flop that if I really want, but I just want to show you the purpose of that. Now I can simply just go about each one of my sides of my cube and reinsert those different, uh, different layers of whatever I want, whether it's video or picture files or whatever you'd like. Now one thing that I'm going to tell you to be a little bit weary of or just be aware of is that I made all these solids based upon my composition that was 720 by 480 if you remember back from my uh, building the 3D cube. So when I brought these pieces of other footage in like this uh, Jay falling with Micah and the other guy it was 720 by 480 and even the logo I brought in was 720 by 480. I just want to make this aware to you because if I do the same exact process and I bring in something that's bigger like 960 by 498 it's not going to work out so much like the way I want it to. For instance I will go ahead and replace it for this video piece of footage with this grunge layer and I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop it on in there and you will notice now it's a little bit bigger. I might have to do some resizing. So it's nothing too bad, but just be aware of it. So now that I've shown you a couple neat, a uh, couple different neat little things that we have going on here, I'm now going to show you how we can make a nice long hallway. Uh, this is actually very similar to what Andrew Kramer does on Video Copilot, and in fact if you'd like to check him out, 
uh, or check his tutorial out that he has online, it goes into this uh, effect a lot more extensively and a lot further. So there's a little shout out to Andrew Kramer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and replace each one of these walls with my grunge text layer. This grunge text layer is actually on the EVE server that you guys can take a look at and uh, be able to use also if you'd like to emulate pretty much the same effect that I'm doing here. This left wall I just noticed is not what I want so I'm actually even going to turn the eyeball off for that one because I don't want it for this one and I'm going to replace and even the right wall I'm gonna turn that one off I'm gonna replace it on all the other walls except for those so let me go ahead and select the bottom layer hit the option key go over it let go do the same thing again for the back wall hit the option key drag it down let go same thing for the front wall drag it down, hit the option key, let go. All right, so now you might notice or see that we have pretty much a layer. I might do a little fine tuning adjustment here and let me turn off my parenting so that way that's off so I can do some fine tuning adjustments because I see that this wall is a little askew so I might slide it on the X axis a little bit more. All right, now if I'm going to go back up to my rotation, of my uh, camera and stuff like that, you see, look at that. I already have a little hall there that I can already play with. Uh, again, to get this, I'm in the custom view under the views. I have custom view down here. That's how I'm able to rotate around because you might notice that I haven't even used a camera yet at all, but there is my little hall. Now I'm going to throw a camera into this mix and see what we can do. So number one, I want to be able to rotate this so it's a little bit easier for me to see. In fact, I'm probably just going to go back up to top view because then I'll be able to see things a lot bit easier, a lot bit, a little bit easier. Okay. And now I'm going to throw a camera in here so we can kind of see what's going on. I'm going to go layer, new, and camera. Bam. Got that guy in there. I'm going to leave a fifth millimeter. I'm going to uncheck enable depth of field and I'm just going to hit OK and it's going to bring my camera down into that layer. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I want to rotate my camera. And this is the number one thing I will say to everybody who is ever playing with a camera. Uh, automatically by default, look how far away my camera is. It's very hard for me to see. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll instantly go to the track Z camera tool and I'll just click and scrub down just to help me zoom out zoom out so I can see some things going on there. Sometimes I even use my track XY to kind of center it a little bit and maybe I can even zoom in a little bit more if I'd like to. Alright, now I can see things a lot easier if you ask me. Um, I want to be able to rotate all this again so I'm going to highlight all these layers and in fact I'm going to delete this right and left wall because I'm not even going to use them. I'm going to highlight all these these layers and I'm going to put them back on my front wall again because I want to be able to rotate this layer around so I can kind of see what's going on uh, with my camera. So let's see if I even type the zero value and zero and zero. Okay, and let's see here by the Z rotation. There we go. And now I can kind of see some things, but I'm looking at the top of it. So that's not really what I want. So let's uh, let's rotate it. Maybe this one. There we go. All right. So now I can see over here in my uh, regular uh, camera, active camera view, that I can now adjust my camera to go down this hall if I'd like. I'll adjust it a little bit to the right and then go straight down the middle. All right, so now I'm actually in a hallway that I can move my camera around and adjust it and have some fun. But now one step that we can go even th further, which is also what I learned from the video copilot, is if I want to make this hallway nice, long, and dark, and scary, I can do that simply by selecting the layer. I can go up to Effect, Stylize, and down to Motion Tile. All right. For this one, I'm going to go uh, output width. I'm going to increase. And as you can see, as I scrub that value, it's making my wall longer and longer. So I'll just type in a number in here. We'll go 600. Whoops, did not mean to hit it that much. I'll do 600 and hit enter. Now, this if this ever happens to you, uh, if I haven't already told you guys in class, that mean, this means that I actually double clicked on my layer and I'm actually on the layer now, no longer my composition. So look up here at your tabs and you can hit this or this wee bit button all the way down here to get us back to our composition. All right, so there I am. So now I did my motion tile, so I'm pretty much just gonna copy and paste this on each one of my layers. Apple C to copy, Apple V to paste, Apple V to paste, Apple V to paste. Now I have a nice long dark hallway that I can move my camera down and adjust positions and stuff like that and do some really cool fun and scary effects. So that's about it for my tutorial. Uh, like I said, if you want to check out a little bit more about this long dark hallway, you can check out Andrew Kramer's tutorial on Video Copilot. But that's the short of a couple things that I want to show you uh, expanding upon the cube. And I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you use it a lot. Thank you so much.
for listening.